Hey guys, Frosty here. Uh, coming at you with a strategy video for Zoom. Um, I logged in and there's no 100 no limit running right now just because of the time of the day. It doesn't always run 24-7. So I'm just, just going to jump on to 50 no limit tables and uh, go from there. Um, I've been playing just for like 10 minutes. Um, and I was recording a little bit but didn't like my footage too much even though I was pretty much winning all the pots I was playing. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to jump into this and you can see my husband popped up. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the stats. Uh, I have a lot up there. I wouldn't uh, try not to get too flustered by all the stats. I mean, especially in Zoom, I think the HUD is a lot kind of less reliable than normal tables because there are so many unknown players. And I don't really play these stakes anyway, so I'm probably not going to have too many hands on many players to, uh, to begin with. But if a stat is relevant in a pot, um, I'll try to point it out. Other than that, we're just going to play two tables for, like I said, about 10-15 minutes and uh, talk strategy on the fly. So let's just jump right into the action again. <clears throat> so right away, nothing going on. Fast fold these hands. I don't like to fast fold like my blinds too much or even the button, but in this case I think I will. And normally I'm not even able to click the fast fold button really because my tables are stacked. Um, but it'll be nice for this video. Mm, here's like an iffy spot I guess. I'm going to quickly search Moosey. So he's playing two zoom tables. maybe. His stack size made me think he's kind of a fish, but I guess I have seven hands and he's super nitty. And this guy's opening, or he's playing 11-8, um, super nitty. I don't really want to three bet there against two nitty players. It would just be as a bluff. And I think I just get four bet quite often by, by the end of the gun raiser. And I just think it's like a, a low reward, kind of high risk situation um, where I think I'd rather just fold it. Uh, if the button was a fish, and like I had quite, like a decent enough sample on him to know he's a fish, uh, then I'm probably going to go ahead and put a 3-bet in and just hope that the end of the gun raiser folds and hope that we can get action from the fish. So it would basically be a, a raise as a bluff against the end of the gun raiser, uh, but for value against the fish. And those spots will come up a decent amount of the time. I don't really like to flat there, um, although I would prefer flatting to folding if the button was a fish and then probably lead out on any flop that we hit. Um, but I'd still rather just 3-bet it. I'm not going to steal here. And I went for the steal on the button here and got donked into. I think I just have to fold. Pick up jacks. So if you're playing these tables and you see like this guy's on a few tables, obviously I just tag him as a rag. Uh, you can fill up the colors pretty quickly if you're paying attention. I'm uh, just going to let Jack7 go there. I'm um, going to assume this guy's sort of regish. Can't find him. I'm just going to flat with Jacks here. I think 3-betting and flatting are both options, but the problem with 3-betting is that I basically have to fold to a 4-bet. Um, the problem with flatting is that I have to fold to a lot of C-bets on, on bad boards. And this guy squeezes... Um, I have 300 hands on this guy. His squeeze is this stat here, 3.2, and the next stat is how often he folds to a 4-bet, um, which is non-existent. I just I was going to fold it anyways, even if I didn't time out. I just can't really get the money in very comfortable there. If we were in later position, then it would be a different story, but I, I didn't really want to flat there and have to play the guessing game, and I didn't really want to have to raise and get the money in because we're usually crushed by that range. So, unfortunately, I think I just had to play it that way. Hit jacks again. Maybe we'll get a bit of a better outcome. So this guy makes a really small 3-bet this time. Do a little search. He's playing one table. <clears throat> Not really sure what to make of his um, his small sizing, but he's given us good enough odds to to basically, well, if we have implied odds, we're fine for to set mine here. Otherwise, we can kind of just try to feel it out. 
it's a bad spot though. When you even like a hand like nines, tens, jacks, and even a small three bet, it's a pretty bad spot. There's just not too much you can do. Like I don't really even want to call this. Um, this is obviously where having more HUD stats will dictate how I play this hand. Um, all I know about this guy is he's playing 38 and 8. So, this of course, it's only 8 hands, but he's only, he hasn't raised any hand. So, I'm going to assume he's kind of tighter. I don't really want to call there and then have to call again on the turn. If the queen wasn't there, I'd definitely have to call 1, I think, at least. But given the overcard and the fact that I think he's kind of tight to begin with, um, makes me just want to fold there, even though I, I don't think it's bad to peel that flop either. Um, on table one here, which we'll call on the left here, um, I would three bet this if this guy was. Uh, I'm not really sure if he's a he's a shorty or not. Might be a shorty. I think I'll three bet actually, and that sizing was kind of bad. I think it was too big. But shorties are going to be stealing, um, if that guy was a shorty, I just kind of went with the assumption that he was. Uh, they're going to be stealing so wide from the cutoff and the button. Uh, you can just three bet them with like all kinds of blockers and, and they just fold all the time. Um, my sizing was kind of bad there. I didn't have to make it that big. I could have made it like 3. I could have made it like 6x and uh, probably got the same outcome. So I put a little bit too much at risk there than I had to, but that was just a math error slash wasn't doing the yeah calculations very well in my head all right couple playable hands here king six will definitely be a steal if it uh, folds to us on the button and here i'm going to just make it 4x iso what i'm going to assume is a fish since he limped the button i'll just fold it now uh, unfortunately, the big blind comes along. We kind of have to play a little bit straightforward at this point. Uh, I'm basically just going to have to give up. I think nobody's range is going to have a decent amount of pairs in it. And I don't think the fish is folding any part of the flop anyways. And I don't really want to get tricky here, having basically no equity other than hitting like an ace or a queen. So I'll just give it up. Uh, queen 10 suited, a little bit too loose to open from that position. Obviously a good spot here with ace-queen in the cutoff. Although it can be kind of tough to play if you get 3-bet. Kind of depends on the opponent. Against super tight guys, you can just fold. Against aggressive guys, you're usually going to want to like just 4-bet, especially out of position. Even though it's tough to continue if they shove on you. Um, I'm going to see-bet this, this board, obviously. I'm going to see-bet this board. Um, quite often. And they fold. Yeah, like, I mean, when I say quite often, I mean, I'm going to be doing it with, like, a fairly balanced range. Um, being, like, draws like that, um, top pair, two pair sets, um, complete air. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it fairly balanced on those boards. Same with a side boards, just because you kind of have to always see bet those boards. Um, otherwise, you don't get paid off when you actually hit your hand. But again, I wouldn't be too worried about balance at these stakes. I mean, it's tough to say who's actually paying that much attention. So, like if a if a real nitty player called me there from the big blind, um, who I figure has a pretty strong range, pr I'm probably never going to see bet air there. But yeah, I don't think that was the case there. Okay, so I'm going to assume this under the gun plus one opener is fairly fishy given the gold star, the stack size, and they're only playing one table. Um, this is a great spot to squeeze. Probably going to make it. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than I would at 100 in the limit because I think, I think that, I think like the smaller stakes you go, the more players will call you. Um, because the money value is less. So I don't really want to be in a spot here where I get two callers out of position. I would have loved it if the first guy just shoved it all in. That would have made it really easy to play. At this point, I'm kind of hoping for folds. Or, yeah, take it, take $6 down right there. 
or a favorable flop, obviously. But yeah, I was pretty much ready to get the money in against against the under the gun plus one raiser for sure, and probably the other two players too. But I wouldn't be happy about it, especially because the governor seems like a rag. And if he backed raised me there, you know he could have aces. Players will do that. Uh, three way, I'm basically forced into checking here. Pretty much just have to give up on this pot. Too bad a board. Uh, ace 10, kind of like an option play, a little bit loose. I think I'll go ahead and open it though. Doesn't seem to be too much threats behind me. No like aggressive shorties that I can see. Um, and yeah, this guy looks a little fishy in the blinds. Not the worst flop. I think I'm just going to check it back though. He's got kind of an awkward stack size where I don't want to get check raised and have to fold. Um, I think I'll just check. We do have the backdoor flush. Uh, we have the de the best hand a decent amount of the time, anyways. So like, you know, if he has like any kind of any any ten or even like an ace, uh, it'll be easier for us to get value now on the turn. Um, now that we check the flop and let him catch up a bit. I mean, the fact that a four makes it straight here makes it a little bit harder. Obviously, like if a ten came, that would be much better than an ace. But yeah, I'm not like always see betting um, flops all the time. Ace Jack appears. We'll go ahead and raise that. And then we get another good spot on table one here where we get, again, what I'm going to assume is a fish just limping there. We're going to go ahead and make it 4x again and isolate him. Um, pocket fives. Looking around this table, it looks like we have a rag, 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 and maybe a couple fish. Um, that's a little bit too tough a table for me to raise there, I think, with pocket fives. Uh, under the gun, I mean. Obviously, I'm raising that from later positions and even middle position. Uh, I got pocket tens here. Sometimes I'll make it just amp it up to 3x in the small blind to the big blind to have a little bit more fold equity. Um, but usually I just keep it all the same. Um, like if I was playing 100 in a minute, I'd probably just keep my raise has the same. But yeah, I think I might need the extra fold equity at 50, but maybe not. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and isolate this guy here in position. Jack 8. Obviously not the best hand, but I think it plays fine enough in position. Uh, completely with the flop, and we get a caller from the small line too, so... I'm not even going to go ahead and see about this. I don't think we get folds often enough. And if we get called, we have like no equity. King could potentially be a good card to try to barrel, but I still think that one of them could easily have it or that, or maybe they won't even fold like Jack queen or something. So I'm still just going to give up on this pot here. Yeah, and he definitely has something at, at this point. Um, not the greatest spot. I think I'm gonna check, check the side. I'm I'm mostly worried about Axum on the button here. Um, because I figure he's mostly flatting pairs there, but it appears that he's not. But yeah, another queen comes, it's kind of a bad card. Still think I'm going to check the side, probably fold. I'm going to search this pokey guy. So it's just like playing one table. <clears throat> I kind of put myself in a little bit of a bad spot by checking that flop. I think I'm just going to fold. Because I don't really want to have to call on the river. And he's going to have a queen a decent amount of the time, I think. I would normally see about that flop. I was just worried about that Axum guy. Um, like I said, I just thought he would be fighting lots of pairs there. And yeah, I don't know. I just figured he's calling me a lot with a better hand. And maybe the fish has a, a better pair. 
and I obviously can't stand a raise there, so I don't really mind the way I played it. Um, I don't really want to set my twos here. I'm going to make this guy pay for his limp in the small blind. I'm going to fold queen jack. Uh, I'll go ahead and see bed and just hope for the best, basically. Not a great board. I'm not going to steal there. Not going to play that. Well, let's just see if we can get into one more spot here um, before we call it a video. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and isolate this guy with a7. And I think I'll fold here. Uh, pretty crappy board. Not the best play to isolate there in that position with a7. Um, I think I'm just going to check fold it. I think his range is... I think his range hits that board quite a bit. Um, and there really aren't too many good turn cards for my hand. So I think, I'm, I think check fold is probably the best play. And unfortunately, we got no action with aces over there. Let's see if we can play this queen jack suited. Not sure who this guy is. He might be a shorty. I have 18 hands on him. I think I'll 3 bet. Probably should have made it a little bit bigger, like 350. Because yeah, I basically forced him to call everything there. So um, that, was, that was a mistake, but I think the sizing was a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I think the 3 bet was fine, and this flop is pretty good. Uh, just given his stack size, we don't have to make it very big here. We don't, obviously don't want to scare him off. That's pretty much the worst card we could have got. Um, since he called the fault, there's a pretty good chance he has a king. I still don't think I can fold the... I mean, given his sizing too, it's kind of ridiculous. I think he has a king here a lot. If he's a fish, I'm like pretty happy calling this down. If he's a reg, I'm pretty much screwed. And now we get counterfeit just to make matters worse. So I pretty much have to check call. I mean, three kings out there. Chances he has a king are, should be low, but we'll see. I think he probably has it. Oh, yeah, just crushed. Well, that was a mistake from the start of the hand. Uh, I should have either folded or three by bigger um, and probably fold to a shove. So I kind of paid the price for that mistake. So, on that sour note, I think we'll just end the video. Oops. Yeah, we'll just end the video there, guys. And, uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully I'll make some more videos of, like, the stakes I normally play. And maybe a little bit longer. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to get something up for the blog. And uh, give you guys a little, little insight into my Zoom game. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. And I'll uh, catch you later. All right, guys. Good luck at the tables.